and I'm just Joe No Title, and I thank you for joining me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today is a celebration, a celebration of life, eternal life. Amen? Amen. Celebrate in our heart, mind, and soul for what our Lord and Savior did on Calvary. Amen? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of John, chapter 20. And we'll read about the resurrection day. Amen? Amen. We'll start reading verse 1. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple... And we're going to the tomb. So they both ran together. And the disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he stooped down and looked in and saw the linen clothes lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went in the tomb. And he saw the linen cloth lying there. And the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposed him to be the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Roboni, which is to say, Teacher. And Jesus said, Do not cling to me, for I have not ascended to my Father. You see, brothers and sisters, she could not touch the Lord Jesus, because she could have died, because he had his glory inside of him that made him wake up. It's like the story we find in 2 Samuel chapter 6, where David goes to get the ark, and they're moving the ark, and the cart carrying the ark slipped, and Azad grabbed the ark, and it angered God, and God killed him on the spot. It's like when Moses went up to the mountain to talk to God Almighty. And he was told, take off your shoes. You are on holy ground. You see, God can come in many forms. As he came with the Israelites when they left Egypt. And he was in a pillar of fire at night. And a cloud in the daytime. Our God is a big God. Much bigger than we even imagine. Amen? Amen. So now turn over with me to the book of Luke chapter 24. We we'll start reading verse 13. Now, behold... Two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. So it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you are having with one another as you walk and you are sad? Then one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all of the people. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart, to believe in all that the prophets had spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and do enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. You see, brothers and sisters, the Old Testament prophesied of Jesus. I'm reading verse 30. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. See, brothers and sisters, he's like a chameleon. He comes in different forms and shapes and sizes. 
We need to recognize who God is. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and there is no other master of the universe. Amen? Amen. So one more passage. Turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 1. Jesus is with his disciples, and we'll read from verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. He also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And so, brothers and sisters, everyone has to be ready to meet his maker, come in the clouds to receive his church, his virgin church. Amen? Amen. And his virgin church is the bride, and the groom is Jesus. And the marriage is the eternal union with the church and Jesus. Amen? Amen. You know, everyone is all hyped up right now because we're going to have a total eclipse in parts of the country. And in Texas, I'm told that you're going to be able to see this a total eclipse. It's going to be dark when it's supposed to be light for four minutes. And everyone is so excited about this. But when Jesus was crucified, it was dark for three hours when it was supposed to be light. Imagine the people running for their lives, thinking the world is coming to an end. The world is crashing on them because of the wrath of God. Amen? Amen. So we all need to be ready to meet our maker face to face. You know, the word of God tells us that love covers a multitude of sins. And that is Jesus' love. And what he did for all those who accept him, repent, and receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, everyone has a choice to either serve God or the devil or themselves. And to serve yourself is selfishness. So brothers and sisters, if the Holy Ghost is tugging on your heart to receive Jesus in your heart, that free gift for eternal life, Picture a car, and you're sitting in the driver's seat. And next to the passenger seat, the door has no door handle on the outside. And Jesus is right there on the outside wanting to come in. But you have to reach over and open the door for him. And so, brothers and sisters, if the Holy Ghost is tugging on your heart right now to receive Jesus in your heart, then please bow your heads with me and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. Dear Father, thank you for sending your only begotten Son to die on the cross for my sins. Please, Father, forgive me for all the sins that I've ever done. And help me to repent from my sinful ways. To turn from my sinful ways. And help me to make good changes in my life. To renew this mind of mine. To have the mind of Jesus to please you and do your will. Please remove this stony heart of mine and fill it with a loving, pure heart, Lord. Please write my name in the book of life and seal me for the day of redemption. Your will always be done, Father, not mine. Now I pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. And so if you said that prayer, you made an oath to repent, turn from your sinful ways. And you ask God to help you renew your mind, to have the mind of Jesus, to, to please God and do his will. And it is his will that you do not continue to sin. It doesn't mean you won't make mistakes. But once you make that commitment, you're going to make proper changes in your life. 
First step, get rid of evil company. The Word of God says evil company corrupts good habits. And the Word of God is the truth and it does not lie. Amen? Amen. And so work on doing God's will every day. And pray without doubting. And when you're ready, God will fill you with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. You need to join a Bible teaching church. Fellowship with other Christians. Sing worship songs to our Lord and Savior. When the devil tempts you, you need to put up a barrier by praying or singing Jesus songs or reading the Bible. Think of heavenly things, spiritual thoughts. The devil can't stand that and he will flee. Doesn't mean he won't return at a different time to try again, even when you have the Holy Spirit. But you have power in the name of Jesus and you rebuke him in the name of Jesus and he will flee because he can't stand to hear the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the grave, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.